So you got a burning go-kart question? Well, today is your day because we're going to answer all the questions from the internet. Okay, so over the last few weeks, everyone's been writing in the comments sections all their questions, and so today we've compiled those into a list, and we're just gonna work through as many of them as we can. So, let's get to it. Question number one. Is it more important to mount a seat further back or just in a comfortable position for you? Okay, so there's no right or wrong answer really for the seat. If you're uncomfortable, generally it's gonna be a bad situation anyway, so get the car comfortable enough for yourself by adjusting your pedals. Try to get your seat as close as you can to the optimum front rear balance. Now, you'll know when your seat is too far back, i.e. you've got too much rear balance, because you'll have to always tune the front of the cart with more camber, caster, front bars, and etc. when you've got new tyres on and the cart set to its neutral position. Realistically, when the cart's optimum, you don't have a lot of camber in them, you don't need a lot of sort of front geometry changes to get the cart to go when it's got new tyres. And then as the meeting wears on and your tires start to degrade, you can start to tune some more front into it. So you can you know, change your camber a little bit, add a little bit of caster if you need to, or just on the Tony car, start to add your front stiffening bars. And that should help. So basically when you're mounting your seat, make sure it's as close to the factory position as you can get. And then if you don't fit in the cart, just adjust it a little bit, being mindful that if you move it too far back, the car will have a tendency to understeer, and if you move it too far forward, your car will have a tendency to oversteer. And they're the problems that you're going to be looking for to see what you're going to have to address first. Question number two. Do you have to run in new piston and rings for the Formula Raytax 125? So you don't have to run in any two-stroke engine. You can go straight to the track and fang it straight out of the gate if you like. I've seen plenty of people do it, but I don't recommend it. I think if you run your engine in, you run way less risk of glazing up bores, seizing engines, and generally wrecking your engine. It's recommended from the factory to run them in, but some people don't and still have success. But it's up to you. If you're liking these videos and you want to ask a question, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications, give us a thumbs up, spread the love, give us some support so we can keep these videos coming at you every week. Question number three. I have a track with lots of corners and not many straights. What setup changes would you recommend? For the tracks with a lot of corners and not many straights, changing directions is going to be the key. Now not seeing your track specifically for tight corners or fast flowing switchback corners, I don't know specifically, but the track I'm thinking of locally for us here is Coffs Harbour, it has tons of corners, the straights are very short and varying track surfaces. And what I generally do is I run the carts a little bit narrower, narrower in the front, so I use a a smaller front hub than the standard 75 millimeter Tony Cart front hub. So I can get the front of the car a lot narrower and then it will change directions quicker for me. And sometimes I couple that with the front bar, either the round gold bar or the standard Tony Cart front bar in its horizontal position. Also too, I like to use a lot of positive camber. So I'll go one to two clicks of positive camber from the standard position. Also, if your track is super slippery or it's winter and it's cold, I'm not sure where you are, you can start to increase your caster as well. If you've got a track with a lot of corners and very close together and you need to change directions quickly, then obviously a narrower car with a lot of caster and a bit of positive camber is going to help. Similar to what you do in the wet weather conditions. Question number four is for our X30 friends. The question is, I have just replaced my Conrod and Piston rings in my X30. Do I need to run it in? Now this question is very similar to the Rotax question. Now I would recommend running in your new piston and rings in your X30. They do have a tendency to seize and I like to run in all my engines, especially in X30. It's got a cast iron ball, not a nickel ball like the Rotax. So it's something that will benefit from a running in. And especially if you've changed your Conrod and your bearings too, it's always good just to cycle them a few times through a couple of heat cycles and then letting them cool down and it's good because when you uh, give the engine a little bit of time to warm up and cool down, obviously there's a lot more oil condensating inside the engine and getting into the bearings in the seals. Okay, question number five is straight back to our Rotax friends and 
pre-race procedures for a Rotax 125. What you want to do for your Rotax 125 is take your carburetor off as we do in the Delorto carburetor service video and clean all your jets out and leave it in a dry condition. If you leave the fuel in the bowl of your carburetor, it has a tendency to evaporate away and it can leave some of the residual gum behind blocking up your jets. So it's always good just to drain the fuel out of the carby, give it a clean out with some solvent and compressed air, put it all back together, and put it back on the cart ready to go for you next time. Also, you can charge your battery, charge your Micron battery, and just generally check over the engine. The power valve I generally leave at least for four or five meetings. Uh, they don't normally oil up too much and it's not necessary to pull them all apart and polish them. Some guys do, I don't myself personally. And you can also change your gearbox oil too, we've got a great video on that. You can check that out, it'll be in the uh, comment section below, there'll be a link. So you can click the link to the Rotax gearbox oil change. So that's something else that you can do that's pretty easy as well. And that's about it for the Rotax. Other than the general cart preparation stuff, which will be check your chain and sprocket, clean your sprocket, clean your chain, uh, clean your axle and your axle bearings, go over the whole cart, replace any damaged bolts or nuts that are ground down, check your side pod bolts, check your engine mount clamps and stuff like that. Question number six is a nice easy one and it is, can you paint your go-kart master cylinder? The answer is yes, you can definitely paint your master cylinder any color you like. Just make sure you cover up any of the fittings and you know obviously the the entry holes to the, the cylinder. You don't want to paint the inside of it. You just want to make sure you've masked those areas up, sand it back, clean it with some prep soles or carburetor cleaner. But awesome, uh, probably better than carburetor cleaner would be wax and grease remover, and then you can paint it whatever color you like. Question number seven is what is the difference between running two and three bearings and what effect does the rear width have on the go-kart? Generally when you're running a second or a third bearing and you go-kart, you're just changing the rigidity of the rear of the car. Some guys don't use the third bearing so they just remove it all together which actually will, will reduce the drag on the axle to some degree as well because you're just turning one less bearing. But the dynamics of the chassis is it's just softer, obviously the axle can bend more because there's not that third bearing over on the uh, engine side of the cart. Now the track width, as you go wider the cart will generally start to slide more around the corner and as you come narrow it can give you some more edge bite onto your tyre. Now that's up to a point. Generally we run the carts at 1380 to 1400. The taller you are the closer you run closer to 1400 and the shorter you are the closer you run to 1380. Now this is all track dependent. If I went to a track with a lot of fast corners I'd want a lot of stability so I'd have my track width closer to 1400 and then if I went to a track with a lot of tight twisty corners I'd be closer to 1380. For someone that is 5 foot 11, 70 kilos in the light category so Rotax light, tag light, something like that. If you're in the heavy categories uh, you're going to probably, you know, 90 kilos plus, 6 foot plus tall you're going to probably run closer to your 1400 most tracks you go to and you'll probably run with your third bearing tight, especially if the cart's hopping too much. The big guys bend the chassis a lot because they, they've got a high center of gravity and that works on the chassis and it bends the chassis rails more and you can start to start getting what the, the, that hopping motion around the corners. Now you can add some seat stays to get rid of that problem and you can also do up the third bearing. If you're a lighter driver, you can remove the third bearing altogether because most light drivers that I see around the tracks don't use it. So you can just take the bearing out all together and that will reduce the drag on the engine or on the rotating assembly. Question number eight. What do you mean by a cart coming on too fast, slow, slash slow, when talking about axles? Also, I've noticed some seats have varying flexibility. Is this the same with OTK? Why would you use a soft seat compared to a hard seat? So generally, if you're using a harder axle, the car will lift the wheel in a, in a more rapid way. Now, this is not the same for every class and every category. I talk mostly about my experiences because they're the most relevant to me. And I use these things to help other drivers in Tony Kart 401s, 801s and stuff like that. If you're running a rookie and a cadet, generally you run the standard O axle or the standard N axle and sometimes we go to the harder axle. 
in the summertime. Basically, if the cart's coming on too slow, I've found for myself, I can just go down to a softer grade axle and the cart will come on faster. Now, this is not always the case. This is just in some instances on a medium grip tire, which is the Dunlop DFM. If you're running a, hard, a softer tire like the MG Yellow, it can be completely different. Now, I don't have a lot of experience on that tire, but from the work I've done with other drivers, we generally run from the medium axle down to the softer grader axles because we don't want the cart to jack too rapidly on that very soft rubber. Now this will change if you go to tracks that have very cold conditions as opposed to our, our hot, grippy tracks that we have here in South East Queensland. What I mean by the carts coming on too fast or going off too fast vices versus coming on slow or going off slow is uh, you want to see that your best lap for an eight lap race is your third lap. So you go out the uh, gate, you do your warm up laps and at the start of the heat, your fastest lap should be lap three, four, five, six, seven. Now on the longer races, say the 14 lap races, 16 lap races, you want to make sure your cart's coming on by lap four, five or six and then staying on from lap six all the way to the end. If a cart comes on too fast, it'll be fast on the first lap, and then every subsequent lap, you'll go one tenth, two tenths, three tenths slower, and you'll just start accumulating time, even though you're driving the same. And that means your carts come on too fast for the race, because you're gonna go out the gate, be quick at the start of the heat, and then by the end, you're just getting swamped by everybody else, and you can't defend the position. Now, in saying that, if your cart's coming on too slow, You'll go out the gate and it'll be taily, understeery, all sorts of problems because, because you're not working the tyres enough, and you're not coming up to temperature too quickly enough. And then what will happen is you'll get too much of a gap to the leaders and you won't be able to close it in before you get to the checkered flag. So it's a compromise, whether you want the car to come on fast or you want it to come on slow. Now the second part of this question is in regards to seats. Now the Tony Kart seats come in this one standard rigidity, but four different sizes. If you want to go to a softer seat, you can ch change brands to say like the Tillet VG hand laid seat. That's pretty pretty common and pretty popular with the Tony carts. I do see those a lot with the guys racing on the Mojo rubber with road tax engines. It's very popular and has a lot of success as a combination. In some of the other categories, like the category I run in with the Dunlop DFM, I've tried the soft seat. The cart felt a little different but I didn't go any faster or any slower did the exact same lap time so I don't bother with the soft seat because they do crack if you stand on them and they don't come with the cart so I use the standard Tony cart seat I have no problems with those that rigidity for what I'm doing if you want to try a softer seat that's great it might help the cart come on a bit slower the cart's gonna not be as so reactive onto the tires because the seat's gonna flex with the cart whereas a harder seat it's going to make the cart more rigid and should make the cart come on a little bit faster. So we have a few more questions on the list that we couldn't get to today, but they require a little bit more in-depth explanation. So we're going to make separate videos on those in the next coming weeks. Thanks to everybody that's written in with a question in regards to Tony Kart and go-karting in general. We really thank you for that. If you have any uh, questions, leave it in the comment section below. Okay, so that's all we've got time for today. Thanks heaps for watching. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Or follow along on Instagram and Facebook at Power Republic and go to our website www.powerrepublic.com.au and buy one of everything. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. My eyes. Point. Is that good? If you put the seat too far back, and you start, you'll notice if you met, cut the missing word That's just. Cut. Question number three. I have a lot of. I have a track. Question number three. Do you want to just repeat the question? No, not really, but I can. Um. So, question number four. Question number seven is, uh, in
increase your caster as well for those tracks with a lot of fast corner sorry not fast corners a lot of fast um, that was a wrap for sure.